Hello everybody, Always Dizzy here. I am here with the final round from the 2023 BC Open. Um, as a reminder, I had just finished round five, which was a very long game. It was over four hours long. Um, and I can't remember how much of this I said in the last video, if anything. But after that game, I was really tired and I didn't have much time to, to grab lunch. Um, it must have been around, I think it was like around 2, it was close to 2.15 p.m. And the next round started at 3 p.m. So I had 45 minutes um, to grab food and just, you know, I... I don't have a car with me at that turn at the tournament because I travel there um, without a car, and um, there's not really many places that close by to eat. The closest place I should have got water before I started. I'm going to regret that. Um, the closest place to eat, really, uh, wh wh where I usually eat is the, the food court at the mall, which is if I walk very quickly, about a 15 minute walk away, roughly thereabouts. Um, and so there and back, that would give me no time to eat. So I ate in the, the pub um, of the hotel where the tournament is held. And even that was very tight. I had to kind of urge the server to give me the bill. I was kind of like, I'm like, come on, I got to pay. You know, I, I actually went up <laughs> to the bar to, to, to pay. Um, and uh, I, my round three i think it was round three opponent actually came and uh had lunch with me and um um yeah so i uh i was very very i was really seriously considering withdrawing from the tournament just because i had no i don't have much time to rest and like wolfing down lunch and um before getting ready for the, uh, the next round, I just, I felt pretty drained. So I was really considering it, but I was carpooling home with somebody else. And so I didn't want to wait around really for like another three or four hours or longer. So I decided to play it, but I was really on the fence. If, if I wasn't carpooling with somebody, I think I would have withdrawn and then just went home. Okay. So just keep that in mind in the game that I was pretty tired. Um, okay, it, the, that's the that's kind of the the luck one of the luck factors in tournaments. Um, if you have a long game, and and if your opponent doesn't, they're going to be relatively fresh, whereas you're exhausted. And my opponent from the previous round, he did withdraw, probably for the same reasons. Okay, so in the final round, I was paired up against. Timur Zureyev, who I had a, I needed to avenge my previous loss against him <clears throat> because some of you may remember, but it, it last year in the 2022 GPO, the Grand Pacific Open, which is usually my favorite tournament of the year, I was having a great tournament and I was actually t at that point I was tied for first place in the final round against Team Zureyev. If I had beat him, I would win clear first in the tournament, getting first out of, um, in my section out of, I think we had over 100 players or, or thereabouts, approximately 100 players. Um, and I think that was the under, at that time, it was the under 1700 section, I think, or it might have been under 1800 section. So... But in the end, he, he beat me. Um, I was in a bit of time trouble and I, and I messed up in the end game. Um, so I wanted to avenge that loss. And since then, my opponent gained about 300 points. Um, so he was now 1823. And I'm, it's kind of funny, I'm facing him again in round six. Um, going into this round, I was I was uh, two out of five, but in the premier section, which had number of, I think, uh, well, many, many titled players. Um, so if I won, I would get 
three out of five, which is actually an extremely respectable score. Uh, more like, even if you're, yeah, I mean, I think even if you're a titled player, like if you're a national master, three out of five in the premier section is actually not bad. Um, he wasn't FIDE rated, but it didn't matter because my first five round opponents were FIDE rated and I did have a, a score against them. So I was already going to be FIDE rated, but I was playing for for national rating points. So I was playing for CFC rating points because I wasn't, if I won the game, um, I wouldn't win any prize money. Um, well, that's not quite true. Oh shit, I hope I'm not <laughs> giving any <laughs> foreshadowing. So anyways, let me just get on with the game. Sorry about that six minute introduction. So the last time I played him, I was white as well, but I don't really recall. I didn't recall what I played against him and I, obviously I had no time to prepare. So exhausted, I played uh, e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop f5, the Roy Lopez. And yeah, then I started to kind of remember, oh yeah, I think this is what we played um, about a year ago. a6, bishop a4, d6. And here I played c3 which is actually, believe it or not, I actually forgot what I play here. I forgot my repertoire move. Um, and um, part of that was probably from fatigue, but C3 is, is totally fine. It's just not what I normally play. Um, he played knight f6, I played d4, b5, and um, as usual, I hope I'm not going too quickly, but these moves are pretty self-explanatory, right? I don't think I need to explain them. Bishop b3. And, oh yeah, God, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm just remembering the game. It's, uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, he plays bishop g4. And I thought for a while here, let's see, what move is this? Seven. <laughs> yeah, so I thought for eight minutes here. And... It's kind of interesting, um, be, you know, in this tournament, I was definitely the underdog. I was second lowest rated player in my section. I was like 66 out of, or 67 out of 68. Um, a few times during this tournament, I, I since I didn't really have anything to lose, I played a little bit more openly, like without stress, a little bit more free. Um, and so th that had a bit of an influence here. Another thing is that I was just so tired that, <laughs> I don't know, I, I was just a little bit more carefree in, in this game. Um, and I seem to recall, I couldn't remember if it was this exact position, but it was definitely a similar position where the computer liked a move which wasn't really in the database, but the computer's top choice was bishop d5. And so I know that looks ridiculous here, um, but I decided to trust my my memory and my you know, on this because bishop d5 looks ridiculous. We're giving up our light squared bishop and offering to ruin our pawns. Um, but I, again, I just, I thought it would throw him off if anything, because it's such a weird looking move. Um, and so I, I played it now. It turns out that I remembered this incorrectly. It wasn't this position. It's a different position. Um, and so Bishop D5 is just a bad move. <laughs> um, Yeah, I decided to be brave and, and play it, and, and, uh, and I did. It's not, now, it's not like game losing. I forget what the eval was. I think it's like minus one or something. Um, but it is such a weird move. Um, and so he took on d5, and I recaptured. And he played knight e7. 
I played h3. And then he made him he made a mistake according to the engine. He he took my knight. I forget what the uh I mean I analyzed this like three weeks ago, so I don't really remember. I forget what the preference was for the engine. I'm guessing bishop h5. Um but he did take the knight. And if I have to guess, I think this is slightly better for white now. Um, and after queen takes f3, I, I did something very interesting. Again, I was I was so tired and I, I, it was kind of an experiment. So here I offered a draw. So this is only move 11. And like, I just, so on our clocks, well, to be fair, I actually didn't, I actually spent a fair bit of time. I had an hour and 17 minutes left, but I offered a draw and, you know, the players to the left and right of me heard me obviously you know whispering that like, i offer you a draw and i i i might be like I, i'm pretty sure at least one of them kind of looked over like what what, what the hell because it was like it's so early it's so early um so i offered a draw and i got up and, and walked away um so yeah so i thought i would throw the option to my opponent just in case he was exhausted as well I know that he also lived on the island, so he might want to catch an earlier ferry home. Um, there was some rumors of a windstorm coming that might cancel the ferries. At the same time, I know that he he was he, he's two almost two hundred points exactly higher than me, so he probably does not want to draw because that means he's willing to lose rating points. <laughs> so I would have I expected him to decline the draw. Um, but again, I just thought I'd throw it there because, and also this position is not fantastic for black. This is pretty awkward for black to play. And if he did take the draw, he would finish two and a half out of six, which is not bad. And I don't know. I, I thought I'd throw it out there because the worst he can do is say no. Well, that's the only downside of it is it, it shows a bit of weakness on my end that I'm not playing for a win. Um, anyways, it was an experiment. He didn't accept the draw. He played knight g6, which again, didn't surprise me. Um, I castled and he made another mistake. He played queen f6. Um, I, I think the reason the computer didn't like it is because black's queen is actually a little bit awkward on f6 because what is it going to do it can't really move anywhere and if once the bishop comes out uh, the queen will be extra stuck so it's a little bit misplaced on f6 um, and then i made a mistake in return and this move i think was purely out of fatigue from the previous round um, i played knight d2 and uh, I really wish I had water here. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so my notes say sloppy and the knight's placement caused me a lot of problems later, which is true. This knight caused me a lot of, ha a lot of hassle. Um, but the thing is, I, I was worried about losing... Um, D5. I was worried, I think, about knight E7 here. But the computer actually just wants to give up that pawn. It, it likes the positional <coughs> advantage or compensation that we have for it. Come on. No. Ah, no I want to. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so I, I was trying to deal with that. And I think I played knight d2. And then so that if knight e7, I could play. Oh, wait, what was the point? Oh, wait, well, why am I even worried about, uh, hang on, I'm trying to remember, this was a while ago, how this would even help deal with 97. I guess I would, I would guess I would take here immediately. I, I forget what, whoops, didn't mean to do that. I forget what I was thinking um, on how D5 would, could get taken eventually. Um, but yeah, anyways, Knight D2 was, was not great. Um, anyways, that's what I played. He went bishop e7. 
I traded queens because I, I just want, yeah, I just want to uh, get the game over with. He took with the G pawn, which I, I figured he might so that he gets a stronger pawn center. I took on e5, f takes. Computers, I believe, said this was all fine. Knight f3, f5, starting to get a bit annoying for me now. And then I blundered here. Um, again, I, so I played bishop g5, just trying to get to an end game, just trying to get the game over with. Um, but this allows a tactic. Uh, this allows... I believe it was bishop takes, knight takes, and then knight f4. And then rook g8 to follow. So now there's a double attack or double, a double. I guess it's a double threat of knight take d5 and rook g8. I can't stop both here, right? Either the d5 pawn falls or, or rook g8 comes. I just can't stop both of them. So easy to overlook that, I think. But because of that, yeah, bishop g5 was a mistake or a blunder. So he played h6. So he made them, he, again, it's not obvious to see that little tactic. It's not, it's, it's easier for black to see than for me because it's one less move. But yeah, he did make a mistake in return. He, he might've been tired as well. I mean, it's round six. Um, yes, yeah, so he played h6. I traded on e7 and I played king h2 to get off of the g file because this is annoying as we saw. King f6, I played b3, he played h5, I played c4, which I, I believe the computer said was an in, uh, inaccuracy, but I think it's not a huge deal. And he played h4, which was also marked as an inaccuracy, but again, not a big deal. Um, and then I made a mistake. Apparently, uh, I took on b5. Um, instead, the computer wanted g4. Which I don't think is easy to see. <laughs> Like that's that's a very weird cons move to consider. Um, I don't think Black would want to take here because this is actually defendable, I think, for White. And if he takes on G, this is this is a weirder option. If if he takes on G four, I guess we we break up white or black's uh, pawn center a little bit, and then we can just hang out and defend this. But that's a really weird move to consider, I feel, a g4. Um, yeah, so I took, on, I took on b5. He recaptured, and then I played rook fc1. So just recognizing that his c7 pawn was, was a weakness easily defended by black, but it is a weakness that I can start to target. Um, that is the only weakness in black's camp. So I went after it. He played rook h7, a4. I want to get my rooks active and again, exploit kind of these weaknesses here. He played knight f4, pretty much the only move. And I played rook d1 defending d5. He played rook g8, and I had expected all of this. Um, and I played knight e1. So I thought for a bit here, and I, 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 I liked my my thought process here. So knight e1, um, knowing that he might double up here. Well, he would, and he can heal. He can win g2. But meanwhile, I've got a certain something on the a file for him to deal with. So knight e1 is basically just to buy some time. That's really what the move is about. So he took on a4, I recaptured with the pawn, and he blundered, he played rook hg7, which is what I was 
expecting, but my A pawn is, is, is too quick here. Um, I don't know what the best move was for black. I can't remember. It may have been rook a8, but this is just not going to work for him because if he trades here, he, he can get two rooks, but it's not going to be winning. It's just because he, he'll have to, he'll, he'll win a pawn, but then my a pawn runs and he can't mate me like this. So yeah, so I played a5 in the game. Next take, knight, knight takes g2. And I pushed. This is what I was expecting and planning. He took on e1 and I recaptured. And realizing that he can't make any progress here because he can never go to g1, um, he played rook a8. So at this point in the game, to give some context, I had 25 minutes left. And he had 35, which is very similar to our previous face-off. He, he always had a little bit more time than I did. Um, well, like 25% like more time than I did. And at this point in the game, I'm feeling pretty good because I was kind of, I was, I was in a worse position and he kind of didn't really respect my idea of, of him allowing him to take on G2 enough. And in this position, I thought, like I felt that this was, I thought I could hold a draw here. And if black isn't careful, I could win. Because now I'm the one with threats and now black is the one that has to respond to them but and this is 100 percent due to fatigue i i blundered next move i mean if this was round one or round two you know i i, I highly doubt i would have made this mistake i i really think exhaustion from that over four hour long game with just a small break in between and then playing this game caused me to make this. It's unfortunate because my opponent, you know, it's 18-23, final round. Okay, anyways, it's just it's just frustrating, right? I'd rather be outplayed than be the the cause of my defeat. So I, I basically I, I rushed it. I I played a7 and as soon as I played it, I was like, oh shit, you know. Um, I forget if I was winning here or not. I don't, I don't think I was. I think it, this was just a draw. Um, let me turn on the engine really quick just to confirm that, but I'm pretty sure that this was equal. I might like my video. Yeah, this is equal. So. Turn, let me turn it off there. Um, I, I can't really run it on the whole time I'm recording because it, it will kill my... Uh, it, it'll, it'll be too laggy on my computer. So the problem with, with A7 is it allows him to push the C pawn. And now he can win the A pawn. Um, so... What was, what was better... I'm guessing rookie C1. Although I could probably do a lot of things. Maybe even just rook E B1. Yeah. Or even yeah, I, I probably have a lot of ways to, to equalize here. Yeah, pretty much anything other than A7. That's probably like the only one of the only moves that will throw away the draw. So I just and I had time. It was just out of fatigue. And again, I know I'm just repeating myself, but that, that is so frustrating. Okay. So I played a7 and he played c6. And 
yeah, I was pretty angry at myself, but I kept playing. So D takes C6, Rook A takes A7. And I played, so here I was, I was thinking, hmm, maybe I can play Rook G1, but that doesn't quite work because if he takes on G1, um, oh wait, no, sorry, not that way. If he, if he takes, if he takes on A1, no, oh, wait, wait, sorry, here. If he takes on A1, that this is not going to be enough because his three central pawns are too strong. But then I came up with kind of a, a nice plan here. Again, recognizing what is the weakness in Black's camp here? Well, this looks pretty weak to me. And so um, I had a plan of just simply attacking it. He can't defend it from the seventh rank because it's defended by my pawn. And how else does he defend it? He can't push it, right? And if he brings in the king to defend, then I have f4. And I think if e4, or was that, did I, I did have a plan for this. Let me think. So boom, boom. Did I, did I want to continue with f4? Probably f4, and then if e4, Hmm. I forget. I, f I forget if that is what I was, maybe it wasn't F4 right away. I forget. I might've even planned to play, to follow up with Rook D2 and then to double up on the D file. That might've been my plan. So anyways, I played Rook AD1. He plays King E6. Yeah. Yeah. And I played Rook D2. Yeah. So this was, this was a good idea. I mean, cause I'm gonna like, I'm down a pawn and I'm gonna lose this pawn. He has three strong central pawns and I'm actually finding some play in the position. Um, yeah, this was my plan and he can't, he can't stop it. So he played rook a six, which is a bit of a mistake. And I played rook c1. I'm trying to remember, why did I not double up here? Oh, sorry. Yeah, because you can just take, okay. Blah, blah, blah. You can just take on c6. So I played rook c1. He plays rook c7. And looks like I'm losing, but I actually found, I found another move that keeps me in the game. Rook g1. Um, and I, I found this a few moves before, like it was part of my plan. Um, because now d5 is a goner. It, it, and I, I really liked this play that I found. It was the only way to continue um, in the game. And it's just, it's just interesting that I had these resources. Um, so he took on c6. I played rook g6. And what's he going to do? Um, if, he, if he tries to retreat here, I just keep giving checks. And, oh, oh, wait, can he escape that way? Mm, well, yeah, no, the problem was added, then I, I win the H bond. And black is still up a pawn, but then I have, I've got a past H bond. And if he can't just go back and forth, I'll keep giving checks. If he goes here again, I'll win the H pawn. So I was being annoying. So he plays King E7, played Rook H6. He plays Rook C4, defending his H pawn. And he can't, he can't do both. He can't defend the H pawn and defend this as well, or else I'll keep giving checks. Um, so I just give a check. He returns to E6, Rook H6, check. King D7. Rook h7 check, king c6, and rook takes d6. This is what this is what happened in the game. King takes d6, rook h6 check, king d5, rook takes a6. And um, yeah, so he's still up a pawn. This looks precarious. At the, 
I thought during the game, I thought was perfect play. This is probably a draw. Well, I, I don't even know. If, I don't know if I want to use the word probably, but it's likely a draw. Um, <laughs> I guess that's the same thing. Um, but and let's just see how much time I had left here. Oh well, yeah, so we're we're getting down there. So I'm down to 15 minutes at this time, and he's got 20. He'll always have a bit more time than I do. He that's just how he plays, I think. So down to 15 minutes. Um, but I've I've been really annoying in this in this end game, and I was kind of proud about that. I, it's nice to be annoying and and vigilant. He made a blunder here, um, rook rook c6, which is perfectly natural. Um, I didn't know what to think about it at the time. It it it's not it's not like an obvious blunder. It's just a, it's what the computer says is a blunder. Apparently, f4 is the only move that is winning for black, and that's not easy to see. It's not obvious, anyways. So, I'm not sure about his rook c6 move though, because did he really calculate that pawn endgame? Because I don't. If if I take the rook. Is that is that winning? You know, like did he calculate that? I don't know if I would want to make that decision as black here. Probably that's win. I don't know though, because the rook pawn. I don't know if that's winning for black. Um, let me turn on the engine. I'm curious. I looked at it before, but I forget. No, th that's definitely winning for black. Yeah, I mean, you would think it would be but it's not obvious so i don't know it's kind of risky in my opinion if you if you don't calculate it um anyways he played rook c6 and i forget how i well yeah sorry so so f4 was the only winning move for black um i, I played rook a8 just kind of um endeavor devoresque's endgame manual putting the rook in the corner in, in rook end games like this, when you're defending, is often just a good, a good way to play, and it's kind of like the Philidor idea. Um, he he brings in his king, and then I made either the most frustrating or maybe second most frustrating move of the tournament, about the same as what I did in the first game the first round and this was just from fatigue and so frustrating oh no this, i think this was more frustrating this was even was it, no this is oh sorry this was so frustrating man because i had planned out my defense and literally i'm thinking here the whole time okay i'm, I'm going i'm just going to play rook a3 i cut off his king from advancing and it's not going to be easy for him to convert this because how does he convert it? Was it, was his king not being able to advance? Um, he, I mean, he, he pushing his pawns won't really do anything. Uh, so rook a3 is the, the obvious choice here, right? And it stops his king from coming into f3. I rook a3 is what I was going to play. Rook a3, rook a3, and. Because I'm old and I'm, I was exhausted. For some reason, my my hand let go of the rook, and I played rook a four check. W one of the most frustrating experiences I've had in chess, and very similar to what happened in round one. But this was worse because in round yeah this this was worse I think. Um, yeah, I, I just threw the game away. So and then he played king f three. I had a draw here, a fairly easy one, um, against, oh, sorry, I, ah, so frustrating, man. Yeah, I owe, I, I owe Teamer a, a, a loss, um, like to give him a loss because uh, he's he's gotten two games out of me where, okay, sorry. That's just so frustrating, right? Because it's not like it's not like I just missed the move, right? It's not like I missed rook a three and uh, or whatever, and I had a different plan that didn't pan out. I wanted to play rook a three, 
But for some reason, my hand let go and played rook a4. I just like thought this was where I wanted to let go of the piece. So, okay. So this is what happened in the game. Whoops. Rook a4. This is what happened in the game. And as soon as I played rook a4, I knew I blew it. But I decided to play on anyways, because you never know. But I was, I was so angry at myself. Rook takes h4. King takes f2. Um, I knew that this was game over, but I, I played on a little bit because... Why not, right? So I played rook h5. Plays rook f6. Rook g5. e4. Rook g2 check. King f3. Rook g3 check. King f4. Um, so I had 10 minutes. He had 17 minutes at this point. I went king g2. Rook b6. Played rook a3. He goes rook b2 check. King g1. e3. I went h4. Goes rook b1 check, king g2, he plays e2, and then I resign. So a very frustrating game um, for a few reasons, but mainly that blunder at the end. So from fatigue, I played this bishop d5, which is just not a good move. Offered him a draw here, which he declined. Um, and I, I'm, I'm a little bit better here, I think. Knight d2 was not great. Um, this allowed a tactic, which my opponent didn't find. And then, um, I played from here on, I, I played, I played this middle game very well. Like I'm, I'm actually pretty proud how I played this and kind of decoy him into taking on G2. And this is equal now. And then I found all this play. Oh, well, I blundered here. So this was, this was the other big blunder. Like I played a seven, which was... I didn't like this one. I just played way too quickly, and it was so obvious that this is a blunder. It, it, this is an easy draw here. Well, maybe not easy, but well, pretty easy draw, as long as they don't play a seven. And I played so that was very frust frustrating too, and that was from fatigue. So that was that was frustrating. But then I played I played all of this really well. Like I, from here on again, like all these moves, I'm really happy with what I did here. Um. And then I blundered here when I played rook a4 instead of rook a3. It's so just, a, okay. So very frustrating because it was a, I know I used that word like a million times in this video, but I think you'll agree. Um, so I lost and uh, I ended the tournament two out of five. <sighs> frustrating. <laughs> um, so I'm going to have another video. It'll be my next video, and it's going to show you the tournament results of the whole tournament, show you kind of where I placed, and, and I'll also let you know how my rating changed after this tournament. Um, and I, I've got a few. I've got a few more videos planned coming up, so be on the lookout for that. Let me know your thoughts about this game and the tournament. In general if you like in the comments thanks for watching and i'll see you soon